So I just found out it's been about three months since I've been on here, which is absolutely crazy. Um, I want to shout out to everybody who's been supporting and still following, liking, subscribing, all that good stuff, because it's been slow, just like slowly growing. But I'm back um, and I'm back with a vengeance like I got like the perfect guest today for the next two weeks. We're going to stretch this out into two episodes because there's so much to talk about. Uh, but I want to shout out to my sponsors, SMP Inc., JPS Computers and my newest sponsor, Ride or Die Legal. If you ride and you find yourself in an accident or you just need you want help with even a ticket right now reach out to ride or die legal that's 844 ride or die legal uh so shout out thanks for that um so my next guest actually we can get into so much we she's been a guest before we met i remember the day we met uh we were both uh hired to work a booth um for harley davidson and um, I show up, I'm working, and we're showing, we're showing off this electric bike and uh, the new electric bike for Harley. And then this girl rolls in, and she rolls in on her Harley, jumps off, walks up to the booth, and I'm like, girls that look like you ride Harleys? This is crazy. Uh, Kayla Perez, thank you for coming back. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing to be back here. Thank you. It's yeah, an honor. this is so cool. <laughs> You've you've ha you've done so much since I last had you in in on the show. Yes. Um and I yeah. love watching you travel. I love watching you all over all over the world. I mean, we can get into yeah. this all day long, but yeah. um I want to leave off your latest accomplishment. We'll get to that. But I just talked about riding Harley Davidson's yes. and I I think it's a funny thing. Like I've posted that that clip of you so many times um, <laughs> talking about, for those of you not, it didn't know this, you gotta tell this story um, about, about getting a Harley and how that <laughs> happened because here you are riding and, and I'll, I'll tell a story after the fact that, that uh, I remember uh, about you, but yeah, why and how did you get, uh, why did you get a Harley? So I've always wanted a Harley um, ever since I was a kid, I just, always was a Harley girl, never was a sports bike, you know, never really yeah. was attracted to that super fast life. Um, I love the classic look. I love the sound of Harley. Oh yeah. And, um, I've always wanted one. So my best friend that lives in LA was selling hers oh. and I wanted that specific Harley. It was a sportster, you know, it was smaller, it's easy to maneuver. So I, Black, black, which is your vibe. black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not like a sparkly girl. So right. um, it was perfect. And I was dating uh, this guy at the time. Just won't name his name, but <laughs> 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 we were dating, and we were kind of at, you know, the end of our relationship. And he was refusing to, uh, for me to get a Harley. He was basically saying. It's either me or the Harley. You, you kind of have to choose. And uh, I said, I, okay, great. The, the choice is done. <laughs> That's <laughs> a no-brainer. <laughs> so I bought the Harley. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's crazy because I remember one day uh, seeing you packing up your bike. Yeah. And yeah. you had, and this is when I learned that whole thing where you had, it looked like two water tanks on the front of the sports store. They were Gas. You. Yeah. It was for gas yeah. because you were going out to the Grand Canyon camping out there all by yourself. You had it packed right. up with a tent and all <laughs> kinds of stuff. I remember that yeah. on your own. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I used to do all these solo trips and I always wanted to just take that Harley out, even though it's not a tour Harley. Mm. I put a sissy bar on just for that specific reason. And I actually packed it up. I have a photo and I have to send it to you. It's it's just packed up to the brim. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, probably the size of the bike upward. And um, there's all of these just like, you know, the tent and I was going to ride and camp. So, um, you know, as I'm cruising along, people are just staring at me like, what is this girl doing? She's living off her bike. Right. <laughs> so that was actually a, an amazing journey to do and actually spoke to my brother yesterday. 
and we want to do a uh, an international bike ride. Really? So he recently became single, and me too. <laughs> well, yeah. There's a lot more room for activities. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's he's telling me, sis, you know, I didn't realize how amazing it is to just decide something and do it yourself, and not have someone deciding your, you know, the co-decider of your decisions. Um, and not saying that there's there's very supportive partners, right. but his was not very supportive. So I suggested, why don't we do this brother sister moto international moto tour, and we're gonna do perhaps Italy. Um, oh wow! Either Italy or Spain in the next couple, say like three months, and uh, we're just gonna go cruise for like eight days. That's so, so cool. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're stoked for that. Um, so there's many more moto tours. I think this could be my next chapter is getting back on the I love that. two-wheel life. I love it. It's it's a sense of freedom that I've never experienced in my life. So That's the same. Uh, I, I just jumped. I'm still sweating from it. You know, it's hot here in Vegas right now. And I just jumped on my Harley and went to a meeting and then rode back, raced back here and was sweating. But yeah. I loved it. And yeah. the whole thing of not i don't know it's it's hard to explain mm -hmm. to those out there who go oh i can see the same things in my car um it's not the same no. it's not the same when you're the wind and and for me i, I have music i have a great stereo system mm -hmm. on my bike and i love just listening to the music and the sound of my bike and and that feeling and seeing all those same things um i'm looking forward to I think in July, I'm going to jump on my bike and go back home to Oregon. Oh. And I grew up in a place that's so beautiful. It's mm. absolutely gorgeous. But as a kid, you don't notice those things, really. I mean, my focus was playing sports and just, you know, who am I and what am, what am I going to be and all that good stuff. And now when I go back, I notice the beauty of it all. The, the mm. trees that, you know, just it just take over a whole block right. and it looks like a tunnel as you're going down. Right. And when you're riding, it's, it's, it's hard to explain that feeling. And if it wasn't for Randy Couture and Ben Carey, my, mm. my band, I wouldn't have a bike. They got me right. a bike and they got me into riding. And it was, it was such a gift that I didn't know I wanted or even needed in my life. Uh, so that's so cool that you're doing that with your brother, yeah. which leads to another question because you're a, you fly private. I mean, you're a, a, a flight attendant, right? Correct. Private is that, is that how, okay. Is that yeah. how they, was that what they call it? Sure. Private flight attendant, okay. private cabin attendant. Okay. I like, see, see, I wanted to learn something. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Yes. So you do that. And I see you all over the world. If you follow you, at, like pull up her social media at uh, Chief Node Traff, please, because follow, go follow Kayla and you will see all the things that you do. Um, you're all over the world. Yeah. You, yeah. It's, uh, it's insane. Every week I'm somewhere different. Um, I have the honor and pleasure of seeing the beauty of each place that I would never be able to venture out and afford. Um, Otherwise, so right. I'm very, very grateful for my career, and it's it's taken me to a whole new perspective as a person. It's opened up and broadened my horizons and my mind, and it's it's been so rewarding. And uh, just meeting different pilots and different people of of influence. You know, I've worked for the you know uh, biggest stars in the world, and just getting on their level and understanding why they're successful, picking their brain, and just being around that energy is so inspiring that it just, it feels you for life. It, it wow. drives you, and so, you know, you, sometimes I don't even know who I'm going to fly that day. If okay. it's a charter, and, and um, they use an alias name up until the last minute, and they change it on the manifest, and you're like, oh, I'm today. I'm flying share. You know, <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> you you've flown share. I That's, have actually. Wow, yeah, how yeah. cool. She's a very very sweet woman. She's an icon. She's amazing. Legendary. That's yes. so cool. And uh, I last year I, I went on a world tour. Um, I signed to NDA, so I can't say no. Who it was don't. For. Yeah, it's okay. However, um, she's one of the biggest in the world, and just flying her and her family. Um, was amazing. Wow. It, was, it was such an experience. So 
Very so, grateful for that. <laughs> what I what I take from it's cool to watch you do what you do and the things that you just kind of dive in and get into wherever you are. So mm -hmm. if you are in a different country and you're trying their foods, you're do you're doing you're just like mm. You know, soaking you know. all that in. And I remember the last time you were on my show and I asked you what was your favorite place and you said, here and now, like in mm. that moment. And it really spoke to me because this is what we've got. Right. We're, you and I are sitting down, we're friends and we're getting to talk about all this stuff together. And, you know, it's fun to watch you do what you do, but it's also fun knowing, okay, Kayla's going to be off doing something else that I can watch, you know, and, and yes. see. And you take it all in and you go... Yeah. You go all out. That's the only way to operate is, is just to really be here now. And it is one of the hardest things to do, um, to really fully consciously be present. Mm -hmm. we're, so, we're so bombarded by just different energies of the future and the past, um, bringing an emotion from each. I have you know X, Y, and Z to do today, and time is of the essence, and you're kind of you know, the white rabbit running around and and then, you know, of the past, of, of what you've recently gone through and mm -hmm. you're bringing those emotions in and that's okay to a certain point, but then it affects your consciousness, your presence in right. delivering that energy to those in front of you. So wow. you, you have to kind of separate that and, and consciously bring yourself back into the conversation, right. you know, what that person is saying and and feeling what they're saying as well, not just listening to them, right. but understanding that. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's always been a practice, everyday practice. That's awesome. Uh, how do you, I mean, you're beautiful. I, you. you know, it's, it's, but that comes from inside out, honestly. The day that I spent with you, working with you, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, this girl, there's so much to you. And but how do you, you travel around the world, there's no way you can have a relationship. Is, is there a trade-off? <laughs> do you, do you, I mean, are you? Um, well, it's just actually very hard to have a relationship yeah. when you are, when you're um, just never, you're never home. Right. You're never home, you're always traveling. So for me, it's always, I always prioritize. So I freelance right now. I make my own schedule. Okay. So if there's someone that I am interested in and that I want to pour my energy into, it's like anything else in life. I have time to travel travel and do these personal, you know, because I travel when I'm not traveling. Oh wow, really? <laughs> so when I'm when I'm flying, I'm flying for work. But okay. then I travel for, you know, for fun. Like this weekend I'm going to LA with some friends and uh, you know internationally with my brother so yes. i i have the bug to just always be on the move but if there's someone that i want to invest time and energy into right. that i'm interested in absolutely i will give that person more time right and i think that's anything in life Every, yeah everyone has the same amount of time it's just priorities well and I, it's it goes back to i'm a musician and so it's the same thing with travel touring mm -hmm. all those things and you find yourself getting, uh, it's like this balance kind right. of thing. You're trying to balance your life. And um, that's, that's tough. It is. Um, yeah. It's tough because it's something going back to what your brother said. It's like, oh, wow. I mean, I can do this because I want to do this. Right. That's, that's wild. You know, you're not having to think about somebody else, you know, and what they may think or what they may say or whatever this is what I'm going to go do. And so, yeah, but uh, I, I think about that with you because of who you are. It's like you have so much to give, you know, and, and so much to give for, with somebody else as well. But then also there's this time in your life where you are taking it all in mm -hmm. and it's an opportunity yes. that you've been given. Cause I remember the day, we were talking <laughs> this there's so many moments i remember the day you said i have an opportunity to fly and you were gonna have to move and this is when you were getting into this right and it was like but i'm gonna have to give up all of this and mm -hmm. i have to sacrifice mm -hmm. all of this for this new opportunity what do i do and i'm like if you can do it if you're 
actually capable of doing it, go do it. Because we get one go around. And look at you now. So it's yeah. fun to watch yeah. <laughs> the things you've done since that conversation. And I remember where we were and we were sitting down, sitting down talking about it. That's, That's absolutely wild. right. Yeah. We evolve and we grow as people and we take these opportunities that just are sometimes scary. Right. You know, you don't know. You're completely dropping one thing and s detouring, switching up your life, pivoting, you know, all these pivotal moments. But one thing that's certain is change. Yes. It's constantly changing. And you have to adapt and you have to take all those moments in because they're redirections in your life. And we're emotional beings. So we want to attach ourselves to something secure and familiar. But sometimes the unknown is the fruit. It's, it's the apple that we need to, you know, go towards. That's the direction. So that's the way that I see it. And I, I just, I keep walking into those unknown locked doors and I <laughs> open, open <up>. them. <laughs> and then there's a whole new surprise and my life's completely different the next day. Wow. So that's a clip. <laughs> that's, I'm just calling it right now. That is a clip. I was like, <sighs> I'm hearing the music as she's talking and, you know, I want to make it black and white. And it's like, geez, that is a clip. Wow. It's so true though. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's like, you're talking to me. I, I've been going through my stuff as well mm -hmm. right now. And, and there were a lot of changes in this, in this building, in this space and the way that that the chief nerd and John and Sticky Paws has has pivoted, and I'm mm. stepping in and pivoting with them and yeah. supporting, and I put I put all this on hold for a moment, and and I'm glad that you're my first sit down in a while to to do this. It's yeah. so huge. Oh my gosh, it's an honor. No. It's an absolute honor. Nice. And you know these moments, they arise. They're those doors. Yep. You open them and. Um, you know, it's 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 heartwarming to share my journey, and and I know that you understand. I oh. know that you've you've seen my journey. I've watched my it from yeah, <laughs> and my struggles in it too. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Because I have dealt with so much, you know, in the what, past. Few. What what's been the toughest thing? Um, really, just uh, balance. Trying to balance everything. You know, all of these new doors that are opening and allowing myself to detach from the others in order, because we only have so much time right. in, in our day, so we have to prioritize. And um, and then figuring out what my next move is, what my next big move is. Um, so I have to put all my focus and energy into that. And it's moving so fast, so many things are happening that these big changes are coming and I'm releasing so much as well. So it's just the amount of change that's happening. Um, but these these challenges, you know, some of them are amazing. Some of them, we don't know why they're happening at the moment. We're just yeah. kind of, you know, we're, we're allowing them to happen. We're feeling those moments. And eventually we release them, depending right. on how much time we need to process. But uh, recently, you know, I've had some challenges and in, in the, you know, uh, climbing and other things <laughs> yeah. um you know health really uh, yeah yeah definitely definitely um in my just not everyday health but health in the mountains kind of okay thing. that's been a huge challenge um that i come up from so definitely um you persevere you learn to know your own strength, believe in yourself and keep growing from those lessons, no matter what it is. I, yeah, I remember you, it was like during the pandemic and this leads into the second half of this year, we'll get to pretty soon, but you took on the challenge, uh, the pandemic happened and all of a sudden you get into rock climbing and yeah. taking on this, this whole new thing. Again, you are, Sitting here, uh, I, the reason why I'm having you back, I had you back, was because you talked about things that you 
that you've done on the last one, which was so inspiring. Um, and even my son was like, yo, dad, who's that girl? And she was so <laughs> inspiring. And it, no, since literally my son has dropped 103 pounds, he's ran two marathons, wow. he's in jujitsu, you okay, know, yeah. it's amazing. It's crazy. And, and if I only started this podcast to, to speak to him and have him actually listen to my friends and the mm. inspiring things that they have done, not just, not just talk about, you can sit here and spit out all this stuff right. that is inspiring and whatnot, but actually you're somebody who's taken action. You, when you say you're giving up this to go after this, I've, I watch that. Mm. I see that happen with you. Right. Um, I was there when you were making some of these de decisions right. that have now evolved into it's, they've happened. Some of them are past things now that we'll get to which is just mind blowing. You guys, <laughs> the second half of this is going to be insane. Um, but anyway, uh, so you took up uh, like, uh, would you call it a hobby, a sport? What is it? What is it that you did? And we're talking with Kayla Perez right now. And, and during the pandemic, 2020 happens mm. and you find yourself doing what? So I had some time on my hands, <laughs> as we all did. And the world comes to a halt and you start realizing what it is you want to do because you're not getting any younger. Right. And these things have to happen. For me, it was overcoming a fear of heights. Which and I'm terrified. I, yeah. And I, I couldn't, I cannot, I'm still terrified of heights. But what helped me overcome that is rock climbing. And so I am very adventurous and I'm very, um, you know, athletic. I love the outdoors, but terrified of heights. So walked into a climbing gym and decided to just go for it. I didn't, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> no clue. Uh, walked in and just started, started climbing on belay. And I remember the first time I did indoor climbing on uh, auto belay. So it basically catches you when you get to the top and you lower down mm -hmm. on this auto belay. And so um, when I got to the top, I didn't want to let go. <laughs> that would be me. Let go. I didn't think it was going to catch me. And uh, this guy, Paul, was sitting at the bottom and he was kind of coaching me. He's like, just let go. You're fine. You're not going to die. I'm like, I, I am, though. It's, <laughs> it's right. super high up and I'm going <laughs> to fall to my death. And I was terrified. And then. I let go and it just slowly lowered me eventually. But it's it, that's life. You just have to let go and trust. And um, after that, I, I kept climbing. I kept the momentum. And then I started outdoor climbing, which is a whole different journey right. on actual real rock. And then I started to grow a passion for it, an affinity for it. It was just this, um, I, I wanted to climb higher. I wanted to... Um, reach new strengths that I never imagined, you know, started developing finger strength and, you know, um, just mental endurance at that point. And I kind of dove, dove into to climbing wow. after that. And, and you, you took on mentors and other, like there were people who helped you along the way, right? hundred percent. So Paul, the guy that yeah. was telling me to jump, uh, he's now my rock climbing partner. He's one of the best climbers I've known. Um, super strong. And uh, he's, I almost, I climb with him almost every day. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's very strong though. He's working on projects now. Actually was climbing, to, we were climbing yesterday in Mount Charleston and uh, he's now climbing some of the hardest stuff. So oh, wow. he's actually inspired now to, to go reach new heights himself because he's himself reached plateaus. So, um, so he's a mentor and some of the greats like Conrad anchor has been around and really mentored me in the actual mountains. So getting into mountaineering after that and started to, um, my first mountain was Mount Shasta. Oh, wow. So I'm from Oregon. So yeah. yeah. So it was right there. Yeah. And then Mount Hood and yeah. Baker and all yeah. of those. And that was that was the start of my mountaineering. Which I saw you like you have to train for these kinds of things. Like yes. you you're sleeping in tents and you know, in your own living room and 
with a mask and all kinds of things like prepping, right? Right. So once you reach higher altitudes, you start to train for, you know, altitude with different anything you have. Mm -hmm. So living in Las Vegas, we have Mount Charleston is the highest peak, 12,000, which is not bad. Right. Um, But if you don't have time to do Mount Charleston, you have resources like hypoxic tent which uh, it's a tent that you sleep in and it has a generator plugged into it and it pumps in a percentage of ambient air. And so it helps you acclimatize uh, more efficiently. Some, you know, there's still a lot of research being done on it, but uh, you can also train with the mask and the generator. And I have my Peloton at home, so I'll just, I'll just uh, (laughs) pop that on and, um, Suffer for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> suffocate for a little bit. You're right, suffocate. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so. so it's what you're doing is that it's training your lungs to not have as much oxygen. Is that what's going on? Right. So the ambient air helps you um, acclimatize more efficiently. So it's, you know, pressure and the ambient air in at altitude. So okay. you have the atmospheric pressure, which you cannot train for. That's something that you have to be at altitude for, okay. but you can uh, do it with the percentage of oxygen. So breathing in less oxygen, essentially. I see. Yeah. And, wow. And uh, this, so you took this on it during the pandemic and look at you. Like I said, that, that one I didn't see coming. That one was something I just started with watching you on social media. Yeah. I saw happening and I'm like, I, I can't even go up like the roof here, the, if I was to be on a ladder, all of a sudden I'm shaking mm-hmm. and it, it just, I can't do it. I was yeah. a guy who fell out of a tree in the, I want to say the first grade, mm-hmm. like out of the top of the tree and landed on my back. And that was it for me. I never could do any of that ever again. You know? Yeah, you could. <laughs> oh, wow. Challenge. Challenge. Yeah. But, Travis, uh, could you climb, rock climb? Um, I mean, physically, no, but mentally, sure, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You, yeah okay. uh, maybe not free climb. That's a special craziness you have to have, like, in real life. But right. I could be strapped in and climb Okay, some well, workouts and I'm going to have to see that. We should all go climb together. We, yeah? Anyway. yeah? It's I really fun. I have a few friends that just, I mean, not only just one example right here telling yeah. us it's awesome, but it's like, <laughs> it's a it's a crazy thing. I see people free climbing at Mount Charleston when I go for rides up there all the time. It's like a cult following. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's love it. Wow. Yeah. I'm so afraid of heights that... I understand. <sighs> yeah. Uh, you know what? what's really helped me through it is breathing. Okay. It's so simple, but it's so powerful your own breath can really just change your whole physiology it changes your mind your state of mind it changes your whole rest uh your whole system your whole Mm -hmm. body so when you start doing breath work you can start to control your mind more so it's more about mind control okay Not, not letting your mind control you but you control your mind and you start to bring yourself back to you know awareness and you start to actually ask yourself why you're afraid of heights. The why starts to come out when you start to face your fears. Okay. Um, so for me, my rock climbing partner, Paul, is always telling me to breathe. And it is a great reminder in anything, really. Right. But um, yeah, just breathe, take deep breaths, and it really does change and calm your, your nervous system. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> so here's the thing. We're, we're wrapping up this first episode because we're going to get into, you came on my show uh, when I was early on, barely had any followers, and you sat in that seat and you talked about, you said in the next couple of years, and it's been way less than that, <laughs> this girl took on Mount Everest. You just got back from taking Mount Everest. We're going to get into that in the second half. Kayla Perez, everybody, Um, this has been uh, the first episode with Kayla of A Hero's Journey podcast. Shout out to SMP Inc., JPS Computers, and my new sponsor, Ride or Die Legal, 1-844-RIDE-OR-DIE-LEGAL. If you find yourself in an accident or just even need a ticket fixed... 
hit us up and um, you know, hit that number and we'll see what we can do for you. Uh, they're, they're great. So Kayla, don't go anywhere. We're going to get into this right now. And you take it on Mount Everest. <laughs> It's coming around, it's coming around to me.